Good day, my lovely listeners. You are listening to the Forty Orty Podcast. Tune in every week to explore inspiring stories and insightful information that dive headfirst into the world of autism and mental health. With all those tantalizing tongue twisters out of the way, let's get into the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Forty Orty Podcast. Thank you for coming back today. This is the third episode that I've done, so we're on the roll. Get we're getting there. So we're just going to have a chat today to Zilea, who has um, struggled a bit with mental health difficulties, and we we met at university and. We had a little bit of a chat there, and she said that she might consider coming on the podcast. So, Zilea, how are you doing? Hey, yeah, I'm good. Have you? Um, are you excited to uh, be on your first podcast? Yeah, yeah, it's. Um, I think, yeah, it's a, it's a new experience. Let's keep it at that. Interesting new experience. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know it can be a little bit nervy sometimes to. To uh, come on and chat, especially when you you know that you're being recorded, um, I find it. I still find it a little bit stressful. So it's uh, it's a learning experience for me as well, to be honest. Yeah. It is. So, do you want to give everybody a little bit of a overview of what you do now or what you did recently, and a little bit of the mental health difficulties you struggle with? Yeah, okay. Uh, at the moment, I'm in, in between things. But before that, where we met in uh, Manchester at uni, um, I went on um, an exchange from Amsterdam. That's where I've been studying. And um, yeah, um, like a few years ago, I think now, I don't even remember, I was uh, diagnosed with ADHD. And um, after that, I had a uh, burnout and um, and then severe depressions. But it's uh, I realized it's all interlinked, and um, and um, I was also diagnosed with um, like a milder depression. It's like this I don't dystopia. I don't know the exact name in English, but it's a long term but milder version. Okay, yeah, I think I um I feel I think I feel I've, I've heard about that before. Um, I I don't really know much about um, I think dys dyspnea or something maybe. Who knows? <laughs> just just the name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's more of kind of a mild drop in mood. Yeah, yeah, I didn't realize it I, in, in, until like I I went to several therapy sessions for several several um reasons and then um one of the outcomes was that that uh and i was like oh, i didn't even i didn't even know and um but yeah but but that's the start when you um it's it's not like that's the thing yeah about labeling it's not about the label because i don't necessarily hang on or believe in them but it's about that you get like realize oh wait there is something going on and what can I do about it? Cause you only experience the world for your own reality. And, mm-hmm. um, and then, yeah, it, it is helpful to, uh, just, just so that you know that there is something that you can possibly try and do something about like for yeah, a la- yeah. the labeling. Yeah. I get that yeah, exactly. because I think, I think like, um, especially in our culture or our society nowadays, people have a people feel like there's a need to label every single thing about them, even if it's not really mm-hmm. giving them that much of an issue. Yeah. Um, but I do, I do think that a lot of the the new sort of diagnoses and um, all all those kind of things, you know, like the the increase in anxiety and depression and stuff. Um, I think I think they are very helpful 
just as um just because you know before people didn't really know about them that much or they didn't realize that they had this type type of issue and i think sometimes yeah. having a label can help in that in that way but it's just about like not getting bogged down with it i think or getting too obsessed with all the labels and and stuff i get that yeah so do you want to talk a little bit about how adhd um, affects you you know like when you got diagnosed and why you got diagnosed and stuff yeah that's a um yeah that's a, nah, it's not a funny story but maybe <laughs> it, like I, i'm uh like in my family it, it is like my sister was diagnosed when she was a child she was very hyperactive i was not that much hyper i was more a dreamer still mm-hmm. uh, but then it was i they didn't recognize me and so it was a few years ago i um got a head concussion and um so and that, that it didn't yeah after two years it was still a problem so i i needed to and during the time i need to uh refill it is that like to get back up like to um yeah to recover to, I, yeah exactly and um so i got uh physiotherapy and um uh, normal therapy for that and that's where she my therapist she sent me she was like okay wait okay and she she recognized signs of adhd and she sent me to a specialist and then uh there uh yeah and she made the diagnosis about it and i was like oh wait hey makes sense like if you look back in your life you're like aha okay that's uh and yeah because what often happens with um certain yeah disabilities is that um you get uh you yeah you lose trust in yourself or you are mad at yourself because you can't do it something and mm-hmm. then uh, but it, it's yeah but you were not really able to and um makes sense makes me more like let go and like okay wait it's um because we can also be very harsh on ourselves mm-hmm. and um and especially like what you like um what i would do is like when you go for example studying and at first at uni i would go with friends but i and i was like looking at people and they were like sitting and studying for hours i i and i just couldn't i just so you had a lot of difficulty with like concentration or now how how did that affect like your studying then because obviously it's going to be a little bit harder to stay down and work when you've got all these racing thoughts and different things distracting you everywhere yeah so i i don't know how i (laughs) How I survived. It took me longer than than usual. It took me um, especially things that 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 need like more concentration and also that you you don't get out like all your potential because you're just um, just finishing the work you need to do and not because um, it's because you have to do it and not um, so it, it is a yeah it's, not it's a bit, easiest, bit of a difficult but... it's very difficult i think like i think um because I, I struggle quite a bit with uni uh i um in my first year i was i was pretty much quite heavily depressed for and anxious for a for a large proportion of my uh, time at university and in the first year i was sort of coming up from high school and all that and I was doing all the work but I was feeling absolutely terrible all the time very suicidal very very down um but then then I sort of when I got further into into university I sort of felt like there was no you know there was so long to go until I finished and all the stresses of the deadlines and the all the all the work that you need to do and all the things and I I agree with you like I just started completing the work 
just because I needed to complete it rather than trying to do the best that I could because, you know, it just seemed so far away from me, you know, as soon as I started a project, I'd have maybe one or two, two or three days, maybe even a week where I would do really well and concentrate and stuff. Then I got all those intrusive thoughts that really made it difficult to stay on task. Um, but I, I can imagine that, you know, uh, having having ADHD would make it difficult as well, um, especially, especially when, you know, you, you're saying about all the other things that you've been struggling with. Um, how were the... God... My memories, my memories fleeting. What were the other things that you said? <laughs> which, which were the other difficulties that you had? Yeah, by the way, I'm sorry that you had to go through that as well. And um, it's, yeah, it's, um, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, let's keep on track. No, <laughs> <laughs> making plans, like, for example, um, so. I got therapy specifically for ADHD afterwards, and um, so and that's also that was a um, more of a, a better insight in okay, what what are the things that I'm I don't see myself, but I'm struggling with, and um, that's making plans or making something in smaller chunks, and um, like I, I was so, like stressed all the time, but also overwhelmed. Because I would have like, oh sh, like do something. Oh, how am I going to do that? I, 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 to yeah, the you get into like thought loops, and if there's something that that you you have a problem with, and you just keep thinking about it over and over and over. Do you do you find that? Uh, it was more like what my reaction is that I would <laughs> run away from it. <laughs> it will make it even more stressful that I would know like, Oh, I have to do something. And, and, and I didn't know, Oh, how am I going to do that? And then I would just ignore it. And then then it would get more stressed and anxious. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, but it, it's, it, yeah, it's ex- exactly. It's about, it's you, you make it, it's, it's some, because you, um, what it did is that you, an underlying thought process is that you think that you cannot do it. So that's what you believe under all these, all the other thoughts. So that's the core issue. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and because of that, you don't start doing it. And then, uh, but what happens is that, and then, but eventually you do it, you actually do it. And, um, but then you prove to yourself that you, that you can do it, but then it's, it's just a pattern that it repeats again. And it's a freaking mind fuck in that way. Yeah, I bet. Um, <laughs> yeah. It, uh... So you think that like negative thoughts are quite a big, big part of the struggles that you had. I don't even think thoughts, but it's, it is, um, because some things have manifested already inside of you. So the thoughts have already become your belief system. Mm -hmm. And, um, but yeah. Yeah, I can see that. So it's more like, um, one, one thing that I found with, um, being depressed just for like, so long because I've I've had it for about eight years now quite mm. quite badly and <clears throat> I think one of the difficulties of having it for so long or having it for any sort of extended period of time is that those negative ways of viewing life and yourself and the mindset that you have towards stuff is very um it's affected by the condition so it's it mm. it sort of ingrains itself into you and you, you, I, I don't feel normal when I'm happy anymore. Because <laughs> I feel like part of me is is yeah. is depressed, Tom. You know, negative, depressed, cynical, nihilistic, Tom. That's that's like what I see myself as. And whenever I'm not like that, I feel weird. 
and wrong. Very relatable, very relatable. Yeah, it, it's yeah, because it's because we don't realize because you don't. That's what the thing is. I didn't realize that I was so down because it's also the mask you put on to the outside world is just a happy. Yeah, that that's that's what I did. Is that you? Because because that's that's the difficult part is that you don't show your inner world so you because you don't because i was at a point in life i was so scared that people would notice that something was off mm -hmm. that i would not like open up anymore or i would um uh keep it very casual because i was like there was this is, this is now i think yeah two years ago up until then um that people would start asking questions about like how are you doing and um what is that in the and, background? Yeah, that, oh, that's my sister's dog. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> it sounds like some kind of lizard. Yeah, she, like, like when she gets excited, she her um, something with her breathing changes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Calm down, doggy. What's what's um what's its name? Is it a girl or a boy? Yeah, yeah, that's that's CZ. It's a girl. <laughs> CZ, calm down, girl. She's now. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, so that's that's difference. Oh yeah, what I want to point out, maybe this is a good example: a belief system and the thought processes. Or that, um, like as if in society you're only accepted and allowed when you're like happy and um, when. Um, so when you're doing well and but when it's not the case it's like as if you're a burden that's what i believed and um yeah it's we don't really talk about generally about that when yeah i don't know it's i find it difficult that um difficult that you can't so it's not normal for you to you don't feel comfortable share it like if someone asks you how are you doing and you say oh i'm actually doing really horrible right now i can't cope with anything i'm stressed i'm stressed with uni work i can't seem to do it i keep getting caught up in negative thought patterns and i can't seem to get myself out of this and i'm starting to feel like what's the point in anything you can't really say that yeah yeah no yeah and for <laughs> me it was, yeah. in, in life it was also that like i had to be my like own emotional support and mm -hmm. um and yeah so so then the person you go to is yourself and uh so you start to you you try to deal with yourself but there are certain things that you just cannot do by yourself and when you start opening up that's what i learned and still learning that um that other people might have an answer or they just to have someone listening to you and but also to realize oh wait i'm not alone or also like so many others that um that have been through this or are going through it or have maybe not in the same way but but different but some other stuff and yeah. and that whole human experience is not only joy and happiness it's also sadness and grief and yeah yeah and, it's the whole emotional spectrum and it is but yeah. i i do definitely agree that we have a culture that um doesn't place much much importance on trying to help friends out you know if um even even some of some of the friends that i'm i'm quite close to if that there are some people who i can go to and just say I'm doing, I'm having like a really tough time. Can we just come, just talk about it? It might make me help feel a bit better. Can we go do something? But for a lot of my friends, um, a lot of like the people that I, you know, go about and do stuff, not necessarily talk in depth about anything. There is, there is no sort of tolerance for it. There's no like, it's, it's sort of like they, they shy away from you because you they think that you expect them to fix it or something rather than just to listen and 
you know, just offer it, offer a shoulder. I think yeah, that's yeah. one of the, the difficult bits for it. But I think a lot of people don't really understand how to react or what to do. Um, and I, th- I think most of the stuff that should be going out is how to help people with mental health difficulties as well as as people having problems discussing it openly as well. Would you agree with yeah. that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I've had friends who are like still who are holding space and 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 they want to for, like, but it's also, I think in my case, it's more that I don't. Um, I've been afraid to do it more because, um, like from my past, like when you open up to people that um, that. Yeah, so when you don't like when you open up to the wrong people, it can um, it can make you like withdraw even more, and mm-hmm. um, that's something I'm dealing with. That's one of the things I'm dealing with to learn to to open up again to to the right people. Yeah, and um, and yeah, some, it's, some people take advantage of it. Yeah, and and your and, openness, they can, see. Yeah, I can the use vulnerability it to, can you, in it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but it's a it's a beautiful it's a beautiful thing still. Like to go, it's I've learned is that because I when I got like very depressed, uh, started like two years ago. Like I'm I'm doing well at the moment compared to that period, but it was if I look back was also a blessing in a way that because of that I had to come to a place where I I was like I don't give a shit about anything and that <laughs> gave yeah that gave me the 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 because i i didn't care anymore give give me like i was like okay that to change things and yeah. um to, to pain be makes brave. you grow yeah yeah because you need to get you yeah. need to overcome it yeah because it, it it means that this way of living, of this way of being, is is just not working. And then, and then you start slowly changing things. And and then it's because um, you, you you shouldn't expect something. I was like, okay, you want immediate results, but it it isn't like that. It's a it's a slow process, but it's but it it is a it, something's happening and. Um, I think I think a lot of it is it's not like a linear thing so it's not like you get great it's more like you get you get a bit bit better and then the 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 slump that you have the 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 period of of maybe heightened mental health difficulties is a little bit higher but then you go up again it's a little bit higher and then sometimes it goes down even further than before but then you come back up and it's more of a um it's 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 not like you just start feeling a little bit better every day and day and you keep you keep going up like that it's i think a lot of it is um it's it's very hard to keep track of how stuff is helping you and sometimes it can get a bit hard to what once once you once you go through doing all of that stuff and you you learn all the different things of coping and um yeah. improving your life then in the long term if you look at look back at it from maybe like one or two years you can see that you are getting a little bit better but I, I definitely think immediately there's no benefits to just thinking positively or <laughs> you know that that old cliche of just try not to think yeah. so negatively yeah, yeah. but like <laughs> what, what i what I did is that I did like obsessively, like oh, that's also maybe too much self-reflection and just sitting there with my thoughts and looking, okay, what what am I thinking about? And so I would like write a lot about it and see, okay, what is it that I'm thinking about? And I would like interrupt my thought, like what I'm doing now, I'm like, also I'm sometimes like, okay, that I'm, I'm like, oh, wait, no, I'm not like, and then, interrupting my own thought process but it's um but that's you keep reflecting on yourself and 
seeing what you're yeah. doing at every point in the day or or look at observing okay what what does this trigger and and it's yeah but it's um and um but yeah what can i say about it is that it is yeah it is what it is at the moment and i know that it's it is getting better and um and i have moments that still that what you have is that um one of the things is i don't like you don't really look at a future because it's you're such in a survival mode every day that um, yeah because i i'm trying to think now about like oh what do i what do i want to do in five years and i'm like oh i have i have no idea i can't even picture myself in five years and um yeah that's what i realized just like a few days ago and i was like whoa i'm it's yeah and and, and that's part of the struggle because i because i deep down is there's something that um that it's something that you don't believe that you're gonna make it that that far and um yeah. Yeah. I completely and, get uh, that. And is is yeah. that one of the reasons why you contacted me about doing the podcast? Yeah, it was that um cuz <laughs> Yeah, I find I find it difficult to talk about it and I and I I hope that someone maybe like if I can like that someone hears it and and get something out of it and that will be like that will be awesome cuz Cause I, I I stopped running away from it, and I um, I like feelings of shame and guilt come with it, but it's nothing to be ashamed of, and and it makes it, yeah, it it's part of me, and I accept it now, and um, and yeah, by doing this, it's yeah, coming out in the open, freaking scary, but I had to do it, yeah, <laughs> felt the right, felt the right thing, yeah. Yeah, just coming out and showing showing who you are and what you yeah. struggle with and what you feel like you're improving on and it's it's quite it's quite a vulnerable thing to do um for a lot of people but um I think it's it's extremely helpful both both for like the people who do talk about it and the people who listen as well. Um so let's go on I, I'm getting I'm getting very interested in in talking. I'm very in this conversation. I'm completely forgetting about the questions that I've written out. <laughs> Should probably get on these ones. Okay. <laughs> what were the 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 main problems and symptoms of these mental health problems that made living difficult? So, for example, with ADHD symptoms, it's that um, s- certain things is um, so. For example, with time management or with um, for- forgetting stuff, it's you don't do it intentionally or deliberately. Or, or, like you, you, like you have good intentions, but when I was uh, living with my ex partner, he he would um, he would take it personal and. Um, or uh but but that was not the case so it can be a um so you could have uh what do you call a yeah miscommunication about stuff and Mm um yeah that's a certain things i i learned to um for example being um, like with uh, what i did with time was that um because like yeah i live in the netherlands and for example here being on time is or like being punctual is very important so one of the things like when i was a teenager i i had no idea of it at all so i would be often very late i would like miss appointments and i I was a total mess with um time (laughs) management so when i was 18 i moved (laughs) (laughs) Is uh, when I was Maybe eighteen, I've got I moved a little back. bit of ADHD in me. <laughs> yeah, we like see. Yeah, it's. I think 
certain symptoms could be, uh, I think what they do is they look at, oh, which symptoms are the most um, obvious ones. And then, yeah, I don't know how it works with, with diagnoses, but yeah. But yeah, anyways. Um, so when I moved to Amsterdam, I made a, uh, so I, I uh, so also a different place. And I, uh, I, I was living on my own and no one to wake me up. Uh, to be somewhere so I started using mm -hmm. uh, a alarm and also like when I'm uh, like at home and I have to be somewhere like I would put an alarm and then I don't have to think about it and then just when an alarm goes off and I'm like oh yeah wait I have to go and like certain tricks yeah. that help it helps to uh, make life easier yeah and um, yeah and yeah, those. Uh, but wait, what was the question? <laughs> uh, Difficult. Uh, the main problems uh, that you have that make di daily life difficult. So yeah. you've t you talked uh, a little bit about uh, how the concentration and the the ADHD sort of plays into how how you function in daily life. But what about sort of the more um, depressive and anxiety kind of side of things yeah that's uh yeah that's that's the other side because uh, like you put on a mask a social mask or yeah different masks like generally we all have different masks but to hide uh like the inner feelings so you would like mm -hmm. um hide to go to places because you feel a certain way and um but the biggest thing i realized what i was doing was not like socially but what i did to myself and i had to apologize to myself later on like after everything is that i was rejecting myself because i was doing stuff i was giving away my power in a way and pretending pretending um yeah to like also to be socially accepted to just go with the, the social way of, of being. But when I was doing that, I was like rejecting myself. And yeah, that's that. And I, and I, that's, that has been the, yeah, that's the, the that has thing. been the price that you have to pay. Like the, yeah. And so you, you sort of put the mask on to feel like you, you sort of fit in, but every time, if, if you make, so the thing that I found is that if you put those masks on and you make friends with that mask on, then you don't really feel like they're your friend because like, mm. they're just, they're friends with this, this, this mask that you've put on every day and they're not really friends with who you are like inside rather than what you're presenting. <clears throat> yeah. Would you agree with that? Yeah, definitely, because they they don't they don't they don't know you because they don't they don't see it. But yeah, and I've been doing that as well as like as a coping mechan mechanism. And um, mm -hmm. but what happens if you do that for a longer period of time? You, you lose yourself entirely, and then I that's I had to fall really hard to start again a journey back to myself. And um, I'm very grateful for that. That that when you real when you start to reconnect with yourself, that's yeah, that that yeah, that that it's a beautiful it's a very thing. Very important thing. Very yeah, important thing. And, yeah, and life changes, and um, like people fall away. Some stick with you because they. Uh, it's yeah. It, for me, it's, I see it as the greatest gift it has even if it's been very dark and and difficult it it is um it it gave me back me and that's and and th that's what i missed yeah great but it's i think that yeah I, I do agree like i think when you start to be a bit more open and you start to tell people how you really feel do do what you need to do or tell people how you feel about them 
um you start you do lose you do lose friends but yeah. it's never the friends that you you need like it's it's never the friends that really are important because if if they if they are to sort of leave and become a bit distant just because you are just expressing how you truly feel and what you think about things then yeah. they're not really your friends no exactly exactly because real friends are not to be lost they hmm. that's on the other side like i have also friends who who were standing with me and are even when they don't know exactly like because I, I like it's like yeah they they get a bit bit by bit but but they're supporting me and and um and that's what what it shows as well that um because who, who is there for you and who is not and um yeah and sort of weans, example, weans it out sort of make yeah, yeah leaves yeah. the quality friend behind gets rid of the ones that just sort of want just to be just have fun and be around anybody rather than particularly you yeah yeah, yeah. and um sorry go <laughs> yeah no, no, this this one like also with anxiety i still have it and i i don't really know because i know some, some what, what triggers it can be like um um places with a lot of people and i can get very anxious and and then it's a very bodily reaction and um uh oh yeah but no that's not what i want to go in yeah wait um one of the other so what i came across is that when you open up i had that within my family i i, I did that more and more and um is that like what i sometimes got as feedback is like don't be so sensitive or like you're so freaking emotional and um it's as if as if uh to be because from like my family for example is not we don't really speak about emotions and um mm -hmm. and it's uh like we support each other but it's it's not in an emotional way it's just like yeah and it's um i c i completely get that like um a lot a lot of people who don't actively talk about how they feel about things as soon as somebody else starts talking about their emotions they think that they are sensitive just because they are making people aware of how they feel rather than just they're just open i get that a lot and some people some people that maybe weren't so good of a friend to me would <clears throat> so i'll be a bit patronizing just because i was telling people i felt i was saying that i was anxious and depressed and all of that and they just took from that that i was just being sensitive and that i was overreacting and i think that can be quite difficult especially like especially i as you've said, if that's how your family works, and you don't really talk about that stuff. It can be very difficult. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, there are things like some things are just like, it's not changing other people or changing because um, you can't do that. It's, it's what I want to go with it is that, to find for yourself like what i i've been like with writing i've been dealing with a lot of emotions with with painting or um walking going in nature like nature is very soothing it's um so it's we don't choose like in which families we're born or um what our circumstances are but like you can choose how to deal with it and that's um and yeah, and and there are ways that that you can deal with it. That's uh, but that's also I think with emotion is that because I'm learning how like because of what what I've been going through uh, about about this. But for example, with my family, they never learned it, and 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 
you can't like you don't know what you don't know and and that it, it can be threatened to people because when you're more in tune with your feelings and um it's can be alien to people as well because they don't know what you're talking about and yeah um, it's not it's not, it doesn't feel normal to them yeah yeah okay um so we, we talked a little bit about uh mental health difficulties how affected how affected you at university um did your difficulties start around school school time like high school secondary school um i think um at primary school i i i had no problems in secondary school it was just um there were a few things but it was it was easy so it was not it was not causing problems um because mm-hmm. that's uh, it, it would like if it had been if i had known then but that's not the case because it can't be but um is that way that that's the thing when you're doing well at school um they like teachers or they they don't realize oh wait there is something going on or um uh so in, in that case it was never registered so and at university was like it was not necessarily like i i realized i had a problem but i um yeah that was my fault back then i i didn't tell my teachers about it and then um but what was helpful was when i started opening up about it that one of my teachers also um he he was my um, coordinator uh, for my, one of my courses that he had um um he had ADD and um so we would talk about um how like he would help like give me advice on okay how can you um like some different techniques uh, and yeah to to study but one of the things that my university offered is that that was for me like yeah i can say life changing in a way they there was this woman one of the therapists at at university she started a group therapy for um adhd and add and one of the things she did and um so that was in that 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 was beautiful because then you also get the mirror of other people of other students dealing with the same problems and and um yeah and it thinks it makes that, you feel that, less alone and gives you yeah, a, yeah. different ways of looking at it and different ways of coping with it yeah and also that oh wait so like the um, they get you that that's the whole uh yeah that i think even after if you're to being hurt to be understood in um yeah that, that that it's it was very nice very lovely to have experienced that yeah i can imagine so feel if if you go so obviously they like these cases are not everybody and everybody struggles with them to different extents yeah. but yeah most of the time if you do have these problems people can sort of listen and and be understanding and stuff but there's there's no one really like other people who struggle as well in this in a set or have the same sort of difficulties and ways of of thinking and i feel yeah. like just being being autistic and being on the spectrum like myself it's it's some it's good just to talk to people who get get me and get what it's about and have the same sort of problems that i do and just now and again but just to have like a little group a little sort of support group for anything can just be great cuz you feel like you're you're part of society again you feel like you're in a community and you don't feel yeah. like you're isolated on a little desert island surrounded in storms of and waves and thunder and it's very um 
it's very nice just to have people around that you can count on and people that understand you. Yeah, and definitely. It's also, I find it's like what you're doing with the things that you do that you you open up as well. I, I it's 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 so brave and to and yeah to hear the other side of the story and um because in in yeah, the, the society tries to like box bo yeah box people okay this is how um a, a, a normal person is but yeah what's normal mm -hmm. but that's a story you know, like a whole different conversation um but yeah and <laughs> i'm okay with the word normal <laughs> i'm okay <laughs> i i don't want to i i like being weird <laughs> that's good with me hell yeah yeah <laughs> i'm very aware i'm very aware of the weirdness that i that i exhibit <laughs> you know like people are probably look at me like if i'm just in a situation they probably think oh just like oh yeah he's, he's weird he does this this kind of thing it's like i know I, I, yeah. I'm looking at myself all the time. Yeah. I know exactly how I'm weird and what I'm doing that's <laughs> a bit strange. I just don't care. <laughs> I was going to keep story. doing it. <laughs> yeah. That, that's the, and if you that's don't like it, part. fair enough. Yeah. That, that, that's what, what I've been learning, like to love yourself and to, to like yourself and, that's and yeah to be in a place that you're like i don't freaking care exactly <laughs> <laughs> i think myself yeah definitely okay yeah. so um <laughs> we i think we've touched a little bit on <laughs> i think we touched a little bit on the the things that you've done um in terms of like mindset and being open and uh going to you know, like talking to your teacher that had ADHD. Um, are there any sort of other remedies or things that you've tried that have been fairly helpful that you'd want to talk about, whether it be like medications, supplements, exercise, mindfulness, books, anything like that? Because I know we have talked about it a little bit. Yeah, so I had therapy and then um i i have medication i had like uh, first methylphenidate and then dexamphetamine okay uh, and then um what 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 did they yeah. do in terms of like what were they for and what were they like they are um they help with concentration and okay. um um, yeah, I don't really like the side effects because they make me even more anxious. And um, oh. are they like are they more yeah. of like a are they ADHD medications? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. so they're they're more like stimulants and um, uh, I know I know that sometimes ADHD ADHD medications can be a bit strange for some people who just read about the read about them because they are a lot of the medications are stimulants and it seems like giving someone with um high uh, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder a stimulant isn't going to be very helpful <laughs> yeah it, it, it yeah in a way it is but then on the other side is mm, it, it's also with the mood swings it's that's not really nice um, oh mood swings as well yeah, but it that's like it's, things. yeah. So it's I think with but I I've been like the not that long, but it's um it depends on how like what I'm going to do. But it, eventually I don't want to use them anymore. Of I mm -hmm. want to get um, stop using them. Um, I did a like I did mindfulness um and um meditation um uh courses uh yeah it's exercise helps to get like to get like the, uh, the um the hyperness out of you and um but it's 
Yeah. But don't, like, that's, yeah. What is it? Cool. I've, <laughs> mm, yeah. it, I've, with certain things, is that also is like when something interests you, something very, and that keeps your attention, then, then it's, uh, then you don't need, you, you don't need anything. And it's more like, mm -hmm. it's when, because your attention gets, when I'm sitting somewhere, like, every small thing that's happening around is you, you notice it. So it's like everything gets noticed. And, um, yeah, I, I get that a lot. Like I think, um, in, in some, some ways ADHD crosses over with the signs of autism. Cause if I hear anything, it instantly distracts me. It's like, it's almost at the same volume as like, if I'm talking to someone and they're like, a meter away from me and something yeah. happens in the corner about 10 meters away from me i'm like oh what's that and then I, I turn my head to see what it is and then i, I yeah. instantly forget what i'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> I, I find i find that <laughs> it's very fun <laughs> makes life interesting doesn't it <laughs> to have to constantly ask what, yeah, where were we where what we were talking about Maybe you get yourself. It's like when your dog, when your dog, it's like when your <laughs> ah, dog yeah, started yeah. wrestling. I was like, puppy yeah, <laughs> I, I've heard. I'm like a puppy sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can be. But like on the other hand, <laughs> there's this thing called hyperfocus, and mm -hmm. that's something. Yeah, I, I, I just have it. Like when, you, when you, sometimes you get in the zone and then you lose track of time and you just like go into your work and that's sick because that's it's 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 crazy then how you can how you like i don't but the hype focus just happens once <laughs> while it doesn't once happen very zone. often it's just get, getting into the zone first you got to get into it first that's yeah. that i think that's another crossover with autism as well <laughs> we, we we have that sort of hyper focus thing. What, what, <laughs> this is one funny time um, when I was at uni and I was doing my project and I was really excited about it. I was doing like this media um, media project and one of the the sub projects in that was that I had to make a magazine and it mean meant that I had to use like make loads of diagrams and do some like writing like a blog post and. I got really into it and one day I, I spent the entire day working on it. Um, I think I went to like the toilet once I had, I didn't eat, I didn't drink any water. And I, I, I was like, why do I have a headache? It's like, Oh yeah, I, I haven't eaten today. Oh God. Like, so I get that hyper focus thing, but sometimes it can be good. But then other times you sort of burn yourself out. Cause you're like, I want to do this. I want to, want to get it sorted yeah yeah <laughs> it's it, it, it balanced but yeah but then you don't go into balance because you go into into different zone of of um yeah it's interesting how it, how it can work it's like but it's i think the human it, it, it ha like it just i that like your brains like i think every everyone's brain is probably wired differently but then i think what we have is that it's wired even more differently because that it stands out um yes yeah definitely if you could give maybe two or three pieces of advice for people who are currently struggling with mental health conditions what would you do what would you say okay yeah uh yeah how, how scary it might be like open up reach out to someone and um it it it, it can be like someone at, at school or uni or neighbor like uh, someone just like reach out don't like i know a lot of people suffer in silence i've met people um and i, I realize especially men who um who, who suffer in silence and bottle it up and keep it inside yeah use it like go through it don't ignore it 
go 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 through it and embrace it and um and use it like and wear it as a crown it's not some something to be shamed of it it, it gives you depth it, it's it, it makes you you and um and um yeah and that's all right that's fine that's that's good good too i think that's um that's a uh, good little roundup to the the episode i'm i apologize we have got like a little bit far we, we have been recording for quite a while and um i have not got through every single question on the podcast um but let's round it up anyway uh thanks um for coming on and is there is there any like social medias or anything that you want people to know about so if if they want to um talk to you or follow your work or anything like that well yeah um um yeah i I use instagram you can yeah if you yeah i want to talk about something you can reach me on instagram okay that's that's it yeah what's your instagram that's do i need oh it's is z u m underscore m l e y a okay and i'll put put that in the description so just make it a little bit easier um but yeah uh if you enjoyed the podcast guys make sure to share it with your friends um share with your family whatever and hopefully i should be getting another podcast out in in another two weeks i'm trying to do it every two weeks it's hard to keep a routine sometimes but i'm sort of getting into the flow of it um so that that's that's all looking good and positive if you haven't already checked out my youtube channel at asperger's asperger's growth um i make a lot of videos on autism mental health a bit more of a sort of rigid video style format so go check those out you can find my podcast on pretty much anywhere apple music spotify maybe a few others as well but they'll all be in the description social medias of course instagram facebook at asperger's growth and twitter where i do midday matters live streams every day um, at around 12 p.m uk time midday and we're going to be talking about different sort of topical issues and stuff. So go check that out if you want to. If you have any ideas of what you want to talk about, maybe you want to be on the podcast, um, make sure to drop me an email um, on aspergesgrowth at gmail.com in the description as well. And Zilea, thank you so much for coming on. And how how did you find it? Do you feel good? Do you feel like getting getting this stuff out is is helping you at all I, thank you for having me and um yeah i um i know it, it, it yeah I, I yeah i felt like the right thing to do and that's it's okay it's i yeah very difficult it's a very difficult uh, thing to do so <laughs> well, well done like a lot for that and i'm i'm sure I'll, i will forward you and, and tell you about anybody who's um sort of commented or, or let you know and if you want if you want to send a comment to Zalea as I said on Instagram or just just comment it down and um I'll tell her about it as well but you you probably help a lot more people than you think you will have from this podcast so thank you so much for coming on um anyway enjoy your day I hope you hope you're doing good um we'll be next we'll be on next week hopefully next in the next two weeks um god i'm not rounding this off very well am i (laughs) i'll see you later guys you're doing great (laughs) thanks for listening (laughs) say goodbye (laughs) goodbye (laughs) listeners have a nice day see you later bye (laughs) alligator